Hello everyone and welcome to another game from round 7 of the 2019 US Championship. Uh, like we mentioned, uh, I released the first video a bit earlier today, so I, as I were, was planning to do another one, uh, a lot of you have suggested this game and uh, for good reason. Uh, once I've seen, uh, once I saw it, it was uh, just, uh, you know, a wonderful game, but we'll get back to that. Uh, now for those of you who might be interested, before we check out the game, uh, a subscriber sent me a short chess animation. Uh, it's uh, some one minute long. Uh, it's uh, well, it's it's a chess animation with some soothing music about uh, a certain game played uh, by Magnus Carlsen. So if you would uh, enjoy checking it out, it's uh, like I said, less than a minute. The link to it will be in the description below. First thing you will see. So you know, if that's something you might enjoy, do check it out. If not, uh, returning to the game, we have a wonderful game between Ray Robson and Samuel Sevian. Uh, and without further ado, let's uh, let's just dive straight into it. Uh, Robson has the white pieces, and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, uh, and bishop to b5. The Rui Lopez is on the board, knight to f6, uh, the Berlin defense, and d3 now. Uh, we will have the same line, bishop to c5, that was played uh, a few rounds ago uh, in the same championship between Fabiano Corona and Jeffrey Xiong. Uh, bishop captures, d captures, and now castles. And here, uh, in this position, Xiong went queen to e7. But here, uh, Sevian goes for a different line. He defends the e5 pawn uh, with knight to d7. And okay, it's a, it's a well-known line. We have c3 by white, prepares d4 in some not-so-distant future. Uh, we have castles by Sevian and d4 now. Uh, challenging the bishop on c5. Bishop back to d6 and here bishop to g5, now attacking the queen. And here we have a very interesting position because this was um, the position on the board uh, in 2017 in the first match between Stockfish and Alpha Zero. And Alpha Zero in this position after Stockfish played bishop to g5, uh, Alpha went queen to e8. Uh, but in this game, uh, Sevian deviates from this line. He went, he goes for f6 and this is, uh, you know, this is a bold maneuver. Uh, if you were in Sevian's uh, shoes here, y if you knew that Alpha Zero played Queen T8 here, would you play the move Alpha Zero played, or would you just say, "Nah, I'll, I'll, I'll just play something different"? Uh, so you know, uh, definitely uh, a courageous maneuver. Uh, but okay, uh, Bishop is challenged now. Bishop to H4, uh, and only now Queen goes to E8. We have Knight B to D2, uh, and Knight to B6 by Black, freeing the light square Bishop, and the Knight can now. Uh, be developed on the queen side. Uh, and here there is one game known where bishop to g3 was played the knightish versus Raznikov where uh, uh, Raznikov won the game in 2019. Uh, but here we have h3 and it is uh, uh, as of this moment on move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, Robson goes for this h3 idea. Uh, but here uh, Sevian well takes advantage of this uh, h3 move instead of bishop to g3 in a, in a very nice way. He goes e captures on d4, now just opening up an attack towards this diagonal, so now you will not be able to play bishop to g3 anymore. Uh, we have c captures on d4, and now queen to g6, just with further pressure towards the uh, the g6 uh, pawn, and also pressuring the e4 pawn. Uh, we have king to h1, not uh, wanting to stay on the g file, uh, and here bishop to e6, just developing. Uh, we have a3 by white. Uh, and bishop to uh, bishop to f4 now, uh, and also uh, I forgot to mention if you're interested in that game between Stockfish and Alpha Zero, I will also put a link to that in the description below. So feel free to check it out, uh, and also I'll put the game of uh, Fabiano versus Jeffrey Xiong uh, also in the description below. Uh, you know, I'll just put a lot of things in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, and okay, uh, rook to e1 uh, with further defense of the e4 pawn. Uh, here, black goes f5, challenging white's very strong center here. Uh, e captures on f5, bishop captures on f5, and now uh, queen to b3 check first. Uh, we have knight to d5 blocking, and here it's a very delicate position, and, uh, well, it's hard to decide for white uh, what to do. Uh, all, you know, danger lurks everywhere. Uh, the best thing for white is to prepare knight e5, to go knight to c4, and if bishop to e4, to even give up the exchange with rook captures. After queen captures, uh, rook to e1, uh, develops the rook, forces the queen back, queen g6, and now knight e5, and here you would have a very strong knight on e5, perhaps black will not be able to challenge it, uh, at least some compensation for the rook maybe. And also if, if black captures, then you get a very strong pass pawn, which now definitely is compensation for, uh, some compensation for the exchange. Uh, but after this knight to d5 move, uh, Robson decides to go for queen captures on b7. 
and queen captures on b7 simply doesn't work. Uh, why it doesn't work? Uh, well, for a specific reason. First, rook a to b8 attacks the queen, queen has to move. Queen captures on a7 is played, and now we have rook captures on b2 uh, with a double attack on the knight. The bishop is now attacking the knight and also the rook. Uh, so what do you do here? Here, um, uh, Robson went knight to c4, now preparing to go and hoping to go to e5, uh, as the rook is now under attack on b2, so you should move the rook. Uh, but, uh, you know, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the, uh, well, uh, find the winning line for white as knight to c4 simply is too slow. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds as usual. Uh, if, if you're, you know, able to do it, uh, congratulations, uh, you know, you are an excellent player. Uh, and for those who just want to enjoy the show, if you found moving the rook anywhere, I did not ask you to pause the video to move the rook. Uh, I asked you to pause the video to find bishop captures on h3. And now pretty much anything black does, uh, well, anything white does will win you the game. Uh, for example, if uh, you have to capture it, if you try something like g3, then you get rook captures on f2. Again, you can't capture anything, the you know, mate is still to follow. And if rook to g1, then just queen to e4, uh, pressuring the knight here. Also, now checkmate will follow. You cannot block with knight d2 or knight e5 as the bishop covers uh, both of those squares. Uh, so, this would be uh, quickly, quickly over. Uh, after this, bishop captures on h3, uh, Robson went g captures on h3, uh, and here we have queen to d3. A queen to h5 was also possible with the same idea that the knight on f3 is under attack. Uh, but okay, queen to d3 attacking the knight, and now king to g2 defending. Uh, and here, uh, Sevian decides to attack the knight twice now. So he just moves the bishop, bishop d6, freeing up the attack from the rook towards the knight on f3. Uh, and knight to g1, getting the knight out of the way, also keeping an eye on the f3 square. Uh, but, uh, well, it doesn't work. So, once again, feel free to pause the video here uh, and try to find the win. It's a forced checkmate in 3, so not uh, not too difficult, you know, for, uh, for, for a weekday. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, as usual. So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, you are an excellent mater in 3. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's just rook captures on f2. And now if you go back, let's say we go king h1, then rook to h2 will be checkmate. Uh, and if not, the move you had to find uh, after bishop captures on f2, now the move of course is, and I'm sure you will see it, queen to not there, but to g3 check as the bishop is pinned uh, from the rook, and now there's nothing to do anymore. Wherever the king goes, uh, it's either king to f1, followed by queen captures or rook captures on f2 checkmate, or if king to h1, then queen to h1 will be checkmate uh, as the bishop also controls the h2 square now. So quite a lovely game from, from Samuel Sevian in this, uh, well, wonderful line of the Berlin. Seems like uh, there are a lot more decisive games in the Berlin defense than there were, let's say, some uh, 15 or, <laughs> or 20 years ago. It's, uh, you know, it became like, uh, maybe it, it became a very uh, dynamic opening. Uh, who knows, as a lot of a lot of other ideas are happening, you know, remember Kramnik versus Aronian in the candidates or, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, a very exciting moment where, where Sevian deviated from the Alpha Zero line. Uh, I don't know, I, I always, uh, when I first started playing chess, and I uh, I often used to memorize short games by heart, especially Morphe's games, Anderson's games, or something like that. And then when I had like a position, and uh, I knew, aha, Morphe played something here, and then I would always play it, because if Morphe played it, then I, I'm, you know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know uh, I'm, I'm in good position. Uh, that, that's what I mean. So when Alpha Zero plays a move, and you deviate from it, uh, it's, uh, well, either good preparation, or... Uh, or, or who knows what it is, but uh, de definitely an exciting uh, move. Uh, but yeah, after this queen, nice queen to g3 check, uh, Ray Robson resigned the game, and uh, a very nice victory for Samuel Sevian. For those of you who have seen my previous video, uh, you have also seen the standings, but in case you haven't, uh, after seven rounds, it's Hikaru Nakamura in first place with five points, then three people with four and a half, uh, Caruana, the Dominguez Perez, and Sevian with this great victory over Ray, Ray Robson, and then as they follow, uh, Wesley So, Jeffrey Xiong, Alexander Lenderman, Samuel Shankland, Ray Robson after this loss, Wonder Liang, uh, Varuzan Akubian after that loss uh, to, to Nakamura. If you haven't seen it, I will also put uh, a link to that game in the description below. So that's like the fifth link, but you know, 
and Timur Garev, uh, sadly, in last place um, uh, after seven rounds. Uh, so yeah, uh, a lot of action going on in the description below, so do check it out. Definitely check out the animation, the Alpha Zero game, uh, you know, all the games if you haven't, and, you know, just enjoy. And uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dennis Fatland and uh, Dennis Fatland, the hoodie guy, so you're more than welcome to challenge him on Lee Chess, uh, Rohan Polidano, uh, Dubrav Kayuraga, Nicholas Richmond, and Curtis Bellamer for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon uh, with some more interesting content. Hopefully, uh, you know, just checking up what's what, checking up on your suggestions. And we will be continuing the Capablanca saga, of course. Uh, but I always have to stress this out. Uh, we do have to cover the uh, current events as well. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you all and I will see you soon.